Welcome to Greyhack. So Greyhack is one of the oldest games and definitely the oldest hacking theme game that I have uh, in my library. I think it's been sitting there untouched since 2019. Uh, it was released December 14th, 2017, developed and published by Loading Home. Grey Hack is a massively multiplayer hacking simulator game. You're a hacker with a full with full freedom to act as you wish on a vast network of procedurally generated computers. Sounds intriguing. Now, despite the fact that this was updated way back in, or when it was released, rather, way back in 2017, it is still actively updated. As a matter of fact, the... Um, patch notes here say currently on version 07 i'm oh, sorry uh currently on version 084386a and that was released just yesterday which is uh june 27th 2022 so apparently it's still being actively updated which is good to see so um let's uh let's get into this let's see what we've got here um Hacked BIOS setup utility system hardware. Ah, excuse me. Um, I mean, these are my actual specs. So, um, explore the Greyhack universe and forge your own reputation in a world shared by all players. When you leave the game, the online universe remains active and running 24 7. Or single player, you play in a world created on your computer, unlike online mode when you exit the game. In single player, the in-game universe stops and progress resumes only upon your return. Well, well, first of all, let's go to the audio. Okay. No audio settings. All right. Well, if we're going to be doing <clears throat> a potential series on this, uh, then we are definitely going to want to play single player because we're going to want to be able to save our progress. It is not recommended to use any of your real-life passwords in the game, since these passwords can be discovered by other players and are accessible by any administrator of the game server. It's also not recommended to use any real-world password in single-player mode, since passwords are saved in plain text in the game's installation folder. Well, all right, then. Um, delete current progress, delete world. Okay, then let's play it. It's not... Okay. I don't know why it wasn't showing up. Like, Windows not updating for some reason. That's fine, I'll just switch to this view. No big deal. Loading, loading, loading. Still loading. Taking a long time to load. Loaderino. And here we have a fictional BIOS booting. All right, pick a username. Hackerman. Your computer name, so the host name uh, will be Love Shack. Uh, choose a password will be password one. I know it said not to use my real passwords, but Password one's pretty secure, so I'm all right with it. It's got all my banking information protected for decades with that password, so if something was going to happen, I think it would have happened by now. Stupid cybersecurity nerds. Welcome to your new operating system. The tutorial will teach you the basics to know how to survive, or how to move, <laughs> how to survive, how to move around the OS. Uh, yeah, let's do the tutorial. I've never played this before. A question before starting. Do you have any, any experience using the Unix command terminal? I do. To continue, close this window and then double click on the File Explorer program on the desktop. Close the window and open File Explorer. When you open the File Explorer program, by default, it opens in the home folder of the user who launched it. In your case, your user's path is Home Hacker Man. This is the path where your user's configuration files will be saved and where you will normally work. When a user is created on the machine, their user files will be created automatically. Okay. 
This is important. You know how the file system is structured. It's quite simple. All folders hang from a main... Okay, this is... I know this is the tutorial, but this is like... Really low-level stuff here. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, it's explaining directory structures. Uh, now go to the main folder. To the, uh, um, it just wants me to navigate there? Okay, I can't... I can only hit the buttons they want me to hit, apparently. Okay. Here you can see all the folders saying, yeah, okay. This is this is so unnecessary right now. Why did you even ask me if I knew anything about Unix and then do this anyway? Okay, go to the bin folder. Um, okay, and press next. The default commands used by the terminal are saved in the folder bin. We will come back here later. Okay, now go to user bin. And here are the programs that have UI, user interface, so by default, you can run any program by double clicking OK. Remember that the that in File Explorer, the desktop UI files are in there, kind of the place you want, rename it in files. You can open the stupid dog. Sorry, something has her wrinkled. Um, you can open the contextual menu files. Okay, yes, I know what context menu is. There's no computer thing Okay, it's time to get access. Okay, it's time to get access to my network. Time to get access to the network. This part of the tutorial will not be guided. You'll have to be able to read the instructions of a series of commands and execute them correctly. The manual is an essential tool to know in detail how programs found on your computer works. In the manual, you'll find examples of the use of commands and programs. It's always a good idea to check it. When you have downloaded a new program to access the network, open the manual and click the first step. So here's the manual. Okay. First steps. Okay. You can close this window. Don't mind if I do. This is your first installation. You will have verified that you do not have access to the network, so you will not be able to do much until you get connected. Several. SSIDs here. In the future, you'll be able to con contract your own. In the future, you will be able to contract your own connection to the network for a monthly amount, or for the moment, you will have access to it in another way. The operating system has a security suit installed by default that can help you connect to the network. For more information, it is recommended that you read the following entries in the manual under the network commands category in the following order. Uh, Airmon, Airplay, Aircrack, OK. To launch the commands, you need to use the terminal. You'll find a shortcut on the desktop. Once you have access to a network, we recommend that you create an email account. Use the browser to find mail services. OK. Here's terminal. <clears throat> so we've uh, we've covered this before uh, on different series, but uh, Airmon, Airplay, Aircrack, Airdump, uh, all of these are, are real tools. So if we launch Airmon, uh, we need to change that to uh, so in order so this is a, a realistic tool. Normally, what this will do uh, is it will gather information on broadcasting SSIDs, uh, or I should say, broadcasting networks, because even if the SSID is hidden, it will still detect them. It just can't detect the SSID, the name. Um, but in order to do this, we need to have a wireless card that is capable of transmission. Well, that's not not exactly correct, um, you know, because all all wireless cards are capable of transmission. Um, let me put it this way: uh, you you need to have a card that has the right capability to do monitoring. Okay, let's just put it that way. So let's go to the entry for that, Airmon. Okay, apparently we need to actually find it. These are basic commands. Network commands, there's Airmon. All right, usage, Airmon, start, stop, net interface, which is pretty much like uh, what uh, you do in real life. This is actually more accurate than the um, most recent 
most accurate that I've seen, which was Hacker Simulator, which wasn't really all that realistic, but at least used the right tool. So Airmon start WLAN O. All right. This is the first step to be able to connect to a password or blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, you can a monitor mode or manage mode into the Airmon command without parameter show interface status. All right. So now we are monitoring. Uh, IW list is going to show us what, uh, well, where is it? It's going to show us what um, Wi-Fi signals are recepted. All right, apparent, well, maybe it's under basic commands. It's not, okay. Um... IW list and zero. All right, so we have the following um, Wi Fi networks within range and a relative measure of their signal strength and their um, base ID, their MAC address, and their name. Um, none of them are hiding their name. So uh, now we can do play and we will pick. Uh, Gill and Burr, simply because they seem to have the, oops, there we go, they seem to have the, uh, st uh strongest, uh, signal. Oh, right, and I need the, well, I'm gonna put the parameter in there first, and I'm gonna need, usually you don't need the E, uh, SSID to do this, so that's a little weird, but okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to send the auth packs. It's going to try and um, get um, basically a hash of the password. And then we can use air crack and a word list to um, Why is AirPlay on there twice and in two different places? It should just be this one. I don't know why it's there. Oh, there's IW list. Oh, maybe it's when I use them, it adds them to the top. Maybe that's what it is. Anyway, we're going to use AirCrack to try and infer the password. Um, so, yeah, getting a cap file... Uh, it's that's fairly realistic. Usually, you need to actually specify a word list with, with, uh, with any cracking software, because uh, what it's doing is it because unless the password is transmitted in plain text, which it shouldn't be, uh, then what you need to do is you need to identify a hashing algorithm, and then using a word list, which is either, either or and a list of common English words, the entire dictionary, for example, along with a list of common passwords. It will use the same algorithm to hash each entry in turn and then compare the generated hash value with the hash value uh, that is known from the packets uh, that were captured. And if the hash values match, because hashing is highly deterministic, a small change in the input results in a drastic change of the output. Um, then you can be assured, with mathematical certainty anyway, uh, that the plain text used to generate one hash value equals the plain text used to generate the other hash value. So if we have a hash value, we have a word list, we can create a list of hash values. If we can find a hash value that matches, we can say with mathematical certainty that that is indeed the password that was used to derive the password in question. There's also really weird things that can happen in terms of probability and passwords uh, when cracking. It is entirely possible, although it is mathematically improbable, to have two different values generate the same hash. And strictly speaking, most of the time, unless you have a complex authentication mechanism that is doing input validation or plain text checking in addition to the hash validation, so a local check and then a hash being sent for remote authentication, um, it's possible to have different input as long as it equals the same hash value. It kind of doesn't matter because all that's really being checked in most authentication systems is going to be that hash value. So um, sometimes you get weird stuff like that. <clears throat> um, 
Now, I'm not sure how long I'm going to have to, to wait for this, because this airplay here, does it doesn't look like it's supposed to. Um, the real airplay looks... <laughs> it doesn't look like this. Um, so I don't know how long I'm going to have to, to wait. We'll, we'll give it some time, I guess. Or I can always try a different network here. It shouldn't take this long, honestly. I don't think I've ever had a deauth take more than a minute or two. You know? So. Zoom. Alright, we're going to stop it. Oh, okay. So I needed to manually stop it. I guess that, I mean, that is true to life, so. Um, VLS, we can, there's file cap, so now we can do air crack, and all it wants is the, is the cap file, I don't need to specify a word list, so. Key found, dagger so, let's do this. Keep forgetting that I can't do that here. Alright, so let's connect up here, to do Password in, connect. Okay, we are now connected. This down here for taking notes. And now it wanted me to get a mail program. Uh, we're supposed to use the browser. Uh, popular website, zero results. All right, I suppose it wants me to just search for email accounts. A reliable and secure mail service. I don't know anything. All of these places are fictional. And also the text is like identical. What if I search for secure email? None. This is a very sea arch. This is a very interesting search engine here. Uh, all right. Yeah, professional and private environment. Does any does it really matter which one I choose? I'm gonna I'm gonna the well I guess in that case I'm gonna pick the one that's easy to remember, which is Arden.org. Um, email services. Um, will be not a uh, hacker. Password will be, again, we're going to continue to use the most secure password ever. Password 1. If it's, if it's secure enough to secure my desktop and my bank account and my stock portfolio, then it is acceptable enough for an email address. Okay, let's be real here. Okay. Well, how do I... What? Oh, I have a mail client or something? Um, where, there it is. Great, you have an internet connection and you received your first mail, but first you need to know a couple of things about the mail program. There's many mail program you can write emails in addition to receiving them, but here you also have some predefined emails that can be very useful. Click on the email button and click next. Uh, oh, this? Okay. Mail client can be used as a social engineering tool if it is used well. If you click on the PF button next to the subject, you will get a list of predefined emails that can be that you can use to get useful information. This list will grow as you increase your experience and reputation on the network. That's all for now. You can close this window. So, PF. Okay, it said a PF, but there's there's not a PF, So, but this is what they're talking about. Social engineering here, so I can do administrative action. I am the administrator admin name. 
There's a problem with the login servers. There we go. Okay, well that's interesting. But what's this what's the email I got though? That's what I want. Ah, you do not know me. You do not know me. I monitor new users who register on remote machines like the one you're using. It's an email account. All of your users will be on remote machines. Do you really have people with terminals directly to the email server or something? What's this? Memory usage. CPU usage. Okay. Uh, you may want privacy for some project. You may want to earn some money like most people do. If you are interested, I can give you access to my private server. But before that, I need you to do something for me. You can consider it a test. I need the credentials of this email address. Uh, Anabor, blah, 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 blah. Belongs to Skip Anabor. That's not what I wanted to do. Copy. The mail client leaves a configuration file on the person's computer with the encrypted password. You will need that file to crack the password. So, this. Okay. Um, I'll put... It is the IP address of the victim computer. Okay, well, you're making this much easier for me. I appreciate that, at least. I've attached a program that may be useful. You may need some legitimate tools, so I recommend that you look for some shop on the net. Answer this email with the password, and we will continue talking. Okay. Shop. Age not found. Okay, fine. Shop. Computer store. Everyone is the best computer store on the network. Quaker. I'll remember it. Shop. Basic server. Nmap. Yeah, we're going to need Nmap. Free. Just like in real life. We are going to put Nmap in... Uh, user bin. Uh, SMTP is always on the accounts registered on the server. The SMTP service is running. I don't know if we, well, we're going to need, we're going to need all of these. Um, well, let's, I guess let's wait and see. Well, they did say that they're not really going to hold our hand here, so maybe we do just need to kind of do our own thing. Holy crap, look at how much money this costs. It's just like real life now. The 525 meg drive is $3,000? What? <laughs> This is 675 is only 354. Oh, I suppose it's probably the quality and the speed really that's determining the price rather than the size. Incredible. Look at it. Here's a 17.3 gig drive that's only a thousand. Well, anyway. Um, are all of these free? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get these then. I'm just gonna put them in downloads for now. It's just easier. Probably should have done that with Nmap too. It's just easier. Exploit report. So that's a vulnerability scanner, tool to manage rented servers. That's free, so I might as well grab it for now. I don't know when I'm going to need it, but. Okay. What is that? Repository. It's all a repository server to host different. Programs. I'm not ready for that. We'll get back to it later. Uh, chat server, FTP server, install an FTP server on the machine. Well, this will get because we, we'll need that sooner or later. HTTP. Yeah. 
And we'll get, what else we got? SSH, and is there something else? SSH. Um, there's SMTP, we'll, well, we'll get it. We're here and we're getting set up, so we'll do it. All right, good enough. All right, now, um, all right, so, and Matt, can I actually, let me check something quick here. All right, so yeah, only user bin is in path, so um, I'm going to move these, which is correct, by the way, if you're not familiar. I don't want to copy. I wanted to move, but that's fine. And then put the LAN, and we're going to leave the others in there because I'm not, these, these are more like payloads than they are. Programs for me to run. Leaped. Leaped. Close. Close. Okay, now we are ready to go. Um, looks like this version of Nmap on the game is much like most versions of Nmap on these hacking themed games, where there's no real parameters. There's just just type in the thing and then the um. I you just type in the command and the IP address and it just automatically runs a scan in real life and map is way, way more complicated and fully featured than that but and that's okay. Uh, there's no tab complete. Well, let's run it and see what we get back. Really? Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, lib SSH, yes. Memory zone, what the hell? I was looking for a vulnerability scanner, but all right. Um, Okay, not what I thought it was, apparently. Okay, well, Nmap says that uh, SSH is open, so can I just... Um, all right. Well, I don't have a user password yet, but I could try default creds. Um... Oh, let's try you go crazy. But no incorrect user password. Okay. Then uh we can try phishing. Since we have an email address. Uh exactly what this and this. And let's try Do, 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 do. Looking for There we go. I need you to give me your password to solve it. Okay. Let's try this one. Oh, received an email, all right. Oh, wait, what? This is confusing. It looks like I sent it to myself. 
But that can't possibly be. This one is from them. Okay, and this one is... It really looks like it's from me, but shouldn't be. Um, Library name. Let's try this one. It looks like it's coming from me. Yeah, it's coming from me. What the hell is going on? This doesn't look right. And it looks like I'm automatically replying to myself. What in the hell? No reply, not delivered. I am very confused. I, the the mail system is confusing me. It looks like I'm emailing myself. I don't see their email address anywhere in these exchanges. No, don't blacklist. I just wanted to delete it. Okay, uh, I'm at a half an hour here anyway. All right. Well, so far this is okay. Uh, it's uh, it's been pretty brisk and pretty pretty true to life, more or less. Um, I mean, it's about as um, uh, in terms of the level of verisimilitude, it's about equal with some of the best hacking simulators that I've played. Um, which is at this point, I think there's like three or four that I would say were really decent. And so far, this is one of them, despite the fact that this was released in 2017, it, it still holds up pretty good. It looks good, feels good. It's responsive. Um, not much has changed in terms of the tools that we're using here in this amount of time. Um, so, you know, I think we're going to do a part two on this one. We're going to dive deeper and at least complete the first few missions here and see if we can really, uh, get to the, uh, the meat of this one. But yeah, so far so good. Gray Hack is uh, is getting a thumbs up uh, for the time being from me. So uh, we'll see you on a on a part two. All right, take care.